so I can work with it without it falling off. I'm just going to get both ends is all I'm going to do. Just a little piece there, flip it over, just to make sure that it's not going to fall away from me while I work. There we go. So now I'll take a bigger piece, full length there, all right. and I'm going to set this piece just you know, barely touching that piece that I just had along there. Now you want to be careful when you put this on. I'm going to flip it over so you can see. But you want to make sure that the rod is touching this piece of foam. If it's not, your blade's going to wiggle all around. So you got to make sure and move it in and make sure you've got a nice tight connection all the way along between this uh, foam and the duct tape and the uh, rod. Now, So you don't have to use Gorilla Tape for this? Duct tape. No, no, you don't have to use Gorilla Tape for this. Not at all. Not really necessary. You're using so much duct tape at this point along this whole length of this that Grill tape would be uh, excessive. Grill tape is, is very expensive too, so when you're trying to keep down the costs of making your swords, especially at home, you know, you probably want to keep that. It's also heavier, so that, that, would, that would make your, your blade way more. So I don't recommend it, but if you really want to make a really durable sword, you could do it. So there, I've done one side, do the same thing on the other side. However, you'll notice, putting this one on, I can't wrap around the bar because I've already wrapped around the bar and I have a piece in the way. So you have to use a different technique for this side. Uh, if you're, you know, you know, your foam will curl up because it was rolled in a roll when you bought it. So just roll it the opposite direction. Like that, make two rolls, press it together a bit, and then it should lie flat. So uh, once again, I'm just gonna put a couple pieces on just to keep it secure while I work so that it's not moving around. Also, I wanna make sure that it's even because I would hate to put my, my big piece of duct tape on and then find out that the blade's not actually flat, but slightly off. So I want to make sure that I get it evened up as I go. So I'll put this along there, another piece in the middle, there. Okay, so now I, I pretty much got it lined up. It should stay. Check the other side, looks good. Okay, long piece all the way down. Get that off. And I just run it all the way down the middle. You'll notice that this kind of sword is a very um, very simply a simple sword to make, which is another reason I love these swords. Um, not just because the materials are very cheap, but because the um, process is so simple. There's no glue uh, involved. In some of my older designs, um, there was a lot of glue involved. Uh, you had to wait for it to dry. Uh, uh, it, this, this technique can be learned by um, even younger children to make swords like these. So I really like that about this particular design. I'm doing the same thing on the other side now. I'm putting duct tape on the uh, second side. I'm pressing in a little bit on the blade as I put this tape down to make sure that it's tightly pressed up against this uh, this bar. And if I get big gaps in here, then you know that you've gotten too far and your blade will flex a lot. So you want to check it, that's what I'm doing right now, to see if it's, if it's flopping up and down. If it's flopping, you duct taped it too far away from the rod and it's got too much motion and you'll need to start again. So you don't want it to flop around, you want it to, uh, to be pretty tightly against there. So that's pretty good. So the next step, uh, I'm going to trim the point. You notice that the point flares out the top, kind of a bit like that. So that's because of this um, thruster tip. So I'm going to even it up so it looks more like a real sword. Um, so I'm just going to take those edges off really quick, right here, and there, just the tiniest bit. It's just really and more aesthetic. You if just, you want, you could mark it with a permanent You could marker, mark it with just... a Sharpie pen if you needed to, but I've done this so much that I pretty much eyeball it. So, um, you know, it's also not critical that it be perfect. Uh, the next step is to come down to the end here, and you got to feel with your finger kind of a bit until you feel where the bar um, starts. Because remember, I put a little bit of, of uh, foam in there, and then it starts to get hard right there. That's an important point, point to, to mark from, because you don't really want to measure from the bottom of your sword. If you measure from the bottom of your sword, you may have cut your foam a bit longer, maybe a bit shorter, and, and you're going to mess up your handle. You always want to measure from where the bar ends because that's where the weight ends. Or you're going to get a, a not very well weighted sword. So for this uh, part, you're going to measure six inches. For short swords, that's the, the handle grip size, six inches. Um, for my broad swords, um, the, I measure up seven to eight inches. And for my long swords, I measure up nine or ten inches up. So um, it's important to change that distance the longer the sword gets or your balance gets off. So I'm going to put six, measure right there, six inches. I'm just going to make a quick line like that. It doesn't have to be perfect again. It's just a rough estimate. And there I go. So that's where my handle's going to be, and that's where my blade's going to be. Um, so this next step is I'm going to start carving the blade out. 
Um, I'm just going to take the edge of this off so I don't have a square part that I'm hitting with. I have what, so what looks like a blade. So I just come in here and at about a 45 degree angle, I start take shaving off this edge, a bit like that, shaving it off all the way down. And then when I get about to that black line, I just kind of cut that off like that. Again, if you needed, you could mark it first. Yep, you can mark it first, but I find that as you do these swords, you, you, uh, you find that it's pretty much, it's not really necessary. You can kind of just go along and, and you can use the duct tape as a guide. As you can see, I'm sort of following the edge of the duct tape to tell me if, uh, if, I'm, if I'm close. Now, you notice I don't have a black line on this side, so I'm going to have to kind of guess and check. Or I could flip it over and mark it if I wanted to. Look, okay, I'm pretty close. Yeah, about there. That's about it. Okay, and now... Now that I've done these two sides, you notice it'd be really, it's really hard to cut towards yourself, like this really bad idea. Uh, so what I do is I invert the sword, just flip it over, and now I cut up towards the tip. And that way I don't have to cut on the side towards me. It's very hard to do. So now I'm cutting on the side away from me again. It's much easier to do. So I just take that edge off a little bit and get all the way up to the tip. There we go. Take that away and flip. Same thing again on this side. Check where I start about right about there. Take that edge off all the way up. Make sure you're using a really sharp razor blade for this. Uh, it's a big waste of time if you're using a dull razor blade. What happens is you'll find the sword takes an extra five to ten minutes, and you might think that's not a big deal, but when you're making a lot of swords, oh my gosh, you're spending extra hours and hours of extra time on your sword that not you don't to need to spend. It doesn't cut straight. Yeah, it cuts all in really wonky lines, yeah. Okay, so, um, so now I've cut out the blade parts there. And I've got um, the blade basically situated. Um, the next step is uh, to cut out the handle. Now, uh, this is a really neat trick you'll find. It saves you a lot of time, again, is, um, is to cutting out this little grip for the grip. And it's a, it solves two problems for you. Um, I'm going to mark this one, although usually I don't mark it because I'm just really good at eyeballing it. But I'm going to mark it because um, this is for a demo video. About two inches down from the back or just slightly below where the rod ends is where you're aiming for. So right about there, mark that there and there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out a scoop right from here down to there. And it just angles in. And you could mark this first again if you wanted to, but I don't because I've done it so many times. I'm just going to cut right along like that, and then I scoop it right back out. So what I've done is I've cut about half an inch out of that sword blade. Save that. You're going to use it. Flip it around. Do the same thing on the other side. You cut right along there, about a half an inch in again. And then when you get down to the end there, you scoop it right back out. You save that. You're going to need it. What you're going to need it for, of course, is a cross guard. So you've solved two problems at once. You've cut out your grip, and you've created a cross guard. It saves you a lot of time. And a lot of foam. Not that the foam's expensive, but cutting out cross guards actually does take a lot of time. So now I've got a grip. And I've got a blade. And actually, if you're making a Greek or Roman style sword, you don't even need the cross guard at all. You could just keep it like that. So the next step, um, the tip. So I'm going to jump up here to get some duct tape. I'm going to make this loop of tape again. Roll it over itself. That. And I'm just going to put it right on the tip there. Remember, once again, this is not Gorilla Tape. This is just duct tape. Press it on like that. I'm going to take one of my uh, points here, this open cell phone. Uh, very, very soft stuff, and I'm going to put it right on that tip there. And I'm going to try to make sure I really get it centered. You know, I don't really want it way off to the side. Is there a particular type of foam you use for the tips? Or yeah, it open cell foam. Uh, it's, it's not a particular type. Um, it's in, like, in, in, a, in a couch, but you don't want it to be too soft. Um, sometimes you'll find uh, foams that, like, um, the an RE75 is a really great foam if you happen to have some, but it's kind of more extensive. RE represents how, how rigid the foam is. So like an RE10 is foam that's so soft that you, you, if you put it up here, you probably wouldn't even feel it. It would just, you, you, you poke somebody with it and they would just go right through. So you can see that this is pretty soft, but it does have a little bit of spring resistance to it. So you're looking for a foam that's pretty good. Probably like an RE50 is probably what you're looking at. Thank you for watching part two of how to make new swords. If you would like to go to the beginning of this video and watch it again, you can click there. And if you would like to watch the next one, you can go there. If you somehow skip to this video, go there to watch the first one.